I thought you had to be financially dependent on someone for it to be financial abuse. No, hobo schedules. They're financial abusers. Thank you for this comment. Because honestly, this app is what helped me realize that that was also financial abuse. Like, he didn't have money. I mean, we both worked at a pizza place. He was a cook, I was a waitress, so, you know, like, the servers tend to make more money, right? And I also had, like, you know, credit cards and stuff like that so I could access money if I got into trouble, you know? But I'm, st I, I, I'm still in debt because of, because of that, right? Like, I was barely getting by when I started dating him, but I, you know, I still, like, n no, I always figure, I figure it out, right? This man made, like, no money. He didn't have any credit cards didn't have a checking account. He would sign his checks. <laughs> he would sign his checks over to like, you know, pay to Melanie Hamlet. And then I would deposit them in my account and then give him the cash. This guy not, didn't even have a driver's license. He didn't have a social security guard. So card, I literally, <laughs> I just remember thinking like, and all this came out after I like kind of fell for him. And so you just start justifying one thing after another one crazy thing after another and it always escalates so i remember thinking oh weird he doesn't have a checking account okay seems like something you kind of need and then i found out he doesn't have a driver's license and i was like okay well he lost it and hasn't replaced it so i was like let's let's replace your driver's license you really need one and he was like oh i don't know i don't have a social security card or certificate so i took him all the way to colorado to try to get him a social security card I also took him to an office down in Santa Fe. Like I drove this man all over the place playing mommy, trying to get him just basic stuff that you need. Before we started dating, the, apparently the car that he drove to work all the time, that was his girlfriend. A girlfriend he didn't tell me he had until we had already gotten involved. A girlfriend he lived with, not in her place, but with her mom. But you know, he, oh, like he just told so many lies, like I'm moving out soon, we're breaking up, blah, blah, blah. And literally jumped from one living situation to another, always using women. So there's one example of this that is like, it's so dumb, but it, to me, I was like, oh my God, we went to a Renaissance fair and all of the, tra like all of, I had never had a boyfriend y'all, I was 36, okay? I was like, I didn't know what it was like to stay in a hotel with a man that I was dating because I never really dated a man. I didn't know what it was like to go, like, I, I can't show y'all, I want to show pictures, but I think it's going to be too traumatizing for me to do that. So, like, I was like, what would I, like, I just, I, had, I felt like I had missed out. So, I wanted to travel. I was like, you know, I traveled alone for most of my life and I've traveled a lot. And I wanted to know what it was like to travel with a boyfriend. So, we stayed in, like, a hotel. It was like, you know, terrible there was like a hole in the wall and like cigarette burns that like it was trash but it was still a hotel and I, was, I felt fancy now having lived in my truck for a long time like just a hotel instead of sleeping in the parking lot hiding in back of my truck with curtains was like a step up but we went to like we dr I drove them all the way to call and I paid for all the gas I paid for all the food I paid for everything and I was like whatever he doesn't make as much money it's only fair but this man always had money for cigarettes and he always had money for that. He also would showed up with a brand new pair of cowboy boots and I was like, oh, that's weird. Like, so we went to like Six Flags or I don't know what it's called, but one of those amusement parks up in Colorado that also had a water park. And I was like, wow, well, like, I mean, seriously, y'all, when you're 36 and you've never done that with a man that you dated, I, I just wanted to experience it. And I knew it was like kind of messed up, but it was fun and exciting and like why not what's the worst that can happen right you can tell by the voices i'm using that i'm still have a little bit of shame right because i, I feel so stupid and, it, and it's in these comments of this video it, you feel so stupid because you know like when you look back you're like of course red flags everywhere but i understand what drove me to do that but anyway we went to this renaissance fair i paid for admission you know i paid for everything and i remember he saw a like they were selling kilts like there was like a you know they had all these little like the little village where they're selling like little things from you know renaissance well and they were selling like kilts and this is one of those guys who's obsessed with being irish i swear i have some of my ancestors are irish but this man was obsessed with it right he just needed a kilt this kilt was like 250 dollars. that was like more than he made 
in like two weeks. Like he did not make much money. And he was so mad that I was upset that he was gonna spend all of his paycheck on that kilt while I was paying for the hotel, the gas, the entrance fee, food, everything. And that was the first night that, that I realized he's a violent man. He threw a glass jar across the hotel room, like as hard as he could. Um, he did like all kinds of stuff that was so sketch. And then he threw, because he was so mad that I didn't let the baby buy the kilt because I held on to his money. <laughs> That's the one thing he let me hold on to. He took the money out of my purse and put it in the trash can in the bathroom. He's like, whatever. I guess I just don't, it's not even my money. I just throw it away. So I didn't actually realize until much later how much this man financially abused me because all of my resources were sucked dry paying for this man. All the while he has a, he smokes cigarettes all day. He smokes, mm, which he called his medicine to help him with his anger. So on some level I was like, yeah, yeah, go get a bag, go get a bag, <laughs> you know? Because I didn't want him to not be, hmm. He drank, all of his money, all of his resources went on mm, smoking and, and drinking but he never contributed any money to any bills, gas, nothing. I even got this man a truck. My friend had an extra truck, like an old one. And before I realized how dangerous and unhinged this man was, I, like my, I talked my friend into letting us borrow it so that I didn't have to be the soccer mom taking this dude to work every day because the old car he had had was his ex-girlfriend's that he was cheating on. <sighs> and you know, this man almost destroyed my friend's car. So I kind of went behind his back and I told my friend, I was like, can you please just say you need that car back? Because I will not be able to live with myself if he ruins your car. Like, I, I, I think he's going to wreck it. He's going to do something bad to it. I don't trust him. Like, please say you need it back. I'll just be his soccer mom again. <laughs> so I was. And then I helped him buy his own truck because I was his little savings account. And then he not, never got a license plate. He never got insurance. He didn't have a driver's license. And then when it was, and then when he said he was going to come visit me in California, which you know, I let him believe that I like wanted to see him. He uh, said he was going to stay outside of a gas station with a sign that says going to California to see my daughter and that people would give him gas money because that's what he always did. And I was like, but you're not going to California to see your daughter like this lying. And he was like, I shouldn't have to pay for gas. And that's when it clicked for me. You know, I grew up like a, a middle class single mom, but I went to like a really nice public school because she moved to this town knowing it was gonna blow up. And, that, and so it ended up blowing up. So there's a lot of rich kids at my public school. And so I was always around a lot of kids. I mean, I have privilege, white privilege, middle class privilege. So I have so much privilege. But in, in this group of people, I was, did, you know, was like at the bottom of the financial ranking system. And so I was really weary of men who had made a lot of money because I saw that I thought they were all like, or men who came from money and were spoiled because to me that like they, they were entitled and I, I couldn't stand entitled men, spoiled entitled men. And what I realized when dating this man is that he was exactly like them, not spoiled, but entitled. He lived in his victim narrative. He thought because he didn't have money, the world owed him that he shouldn't have to pay for anything. So he was a parasite, which, you know, honestly, a lot of the rich guys, like the billionaires, they're parasites too. It's like, there's actually very, they all have a lot in common, but because he's a cishet white man who came from a lot of trauma and not a lot of money, in my experience, he was just as bad, if not worse than the richest dudes I'd ever been around. So be careful of broke men. <laughs> and thanks again for this comment, because I don't think we talk enough about this. Like and follow for more if you want more stories.